max zones, moving zones, zones that bounce back. There's many types of zones we're all used to seeing, but there's one we don't get to see too often, and that's the mirror zone. A fourth to fifth zone that is close to identical to another one within the same session of play. Simulating the same endgame, rotations, and giving squads a second chance to redeem themselves, or on the flip side, shatter under the pressure. The trio we're going to reflect on today is no other than DGEN, Agers, and Skittles from round 4 of Qualifier 2 on NA East. They had a mirror zone in game 4 that reflected almost the exact same zone we saw in game 1, and both performances were so different even though they were playing near the same space. In game 4, the builds are healthy, everyone rocking purple tacks, double heals, and are about to have a shining endgame. Even positionally, they're slightly north of the fourth zone on the dead side, so they have the god loadout with an easy rotation. Nothing can go wrong, right? Wrong. They're missing the frame around this entire game plan, and that's Storm Surge. However, an identical issue for the team next to them that ends up pushing them as they're low on Storm Surge, and although they hold out and win the battle, they take losses in war, as Aegis goes down in the fight and they're still below Storm Surge. Skills hits a clutch snipe to get them above, but Agers was ultimately lost in the process. Fifth zone pulls, and they are below Surge once again, and used up so many materials and builds just to survive to this point. Already a teammate down and running through their reserve, sand tunneling becomes the desperate strategy to salvage the game, but doesn't work out how they were hoping to, and they both go down. This trio had the best setup to win the game, but on this side of the mirror, fell short on one piece of the puzzle. They ended up placing 19th with zero elims, but still have a few more games to pick things up. Traveling through the seeing glass and back in time just a little bit, we can see the reflection of game four's mirror zone in game number one. Close to the same materials per player and power in each and every loadout. Storm Surge, though, the frame of the plan, was actually sturdy this game, as the trio took an early game fight, picking up all the damage they needed, as well as 8 elimination points before the endgame madness even begun. In this alternate reality, or should I say in game 1 compared to game 4, they have an easy, no stress time rotating to the 5th zone, and it was so easy and early that they ended up with height. I don't think you need the foresight to see where this one's going. They used this setup game plan, full surge and hot loot to control the game, keep height, drop down the pressure and win the game. Even after starting the day off with a win and getting a mirror zone inside an important qualifier, things might not always be as they seem. It was storm surge this time, but there's so many variables pro teams have to take care of each game. No matter how similar they are, this also means there's something unique to watch in every game of Fortnite. FNCS is going to be jam-packed with even cooler patterns as the season goes on. So stay tuned. We got our eye on the rearview mirror of that battle bus. Beep, beep. beep.